logging today means mass felling of trees on the leased plots with the subsequent processing of timber. In the process of harvesting, the trees are cut down with the help of special machines, inevitably damaging the bark. At woodworking plants, the birch is first immersed in containers of water, and then in its processing, unnecessary birch bark is lost. After that, this bark is used to fuel the furnaces in production. Nowadays, the forests of the Yasnaya Poliana estate occupies 254 hectares, or 62% of the territory of the museum reserve. There are 59 hectares of the birch trees now at Yasnaya Poliana, of which 24 hectares are those that Tolstoy planted himself. In the 1860s, it was decided that the task for the forestry should be to grow the faster growing species. The population as well as the production grew, and there was a necessity that the forest matures faster in order to make some buildings there. Then eventually, what about the firewood? In terms of calories, the birch is high calorie. How to drink tea? How to cook dinner? How to warm up the house? The trees were planted not only by Lev Nikolaevich, but also by his relatives, and of course, by his wife, Sofia Andreevna. For planting, she chose the spruces as it was a more valuable type. In 1890s, Sofia Andreevna planted several plots of coniferous forest in Yasnaya Poliana. A favorite birch tree bench was made for the writer nearby. He used to say, I always admire these spruce trees. This is my favorite place. And in the morning, it is my walk. Sometimes I sit down here and write. Lev Nikolaevich was also very fond of walking along the line. This is just a birch tree strip near Yasnaya Poliana. Birch line was a place of his favorite walks. In her memoirs, the eldest daughter of Lev Nikolaevich Tatyana Lvovna Schotina Tolstaya writes, now this is the planting of an old birch tree, the so-called Abramovsky forest. And when I have to drive or walk by, I always remember how diligently under the guidance of Papa and Nikolinka Arseniev, I planted small and fluffy young birches. When they grow up, you will pick up the mushrooms here, Papa told me then. In the memoirs of Tatyana Andreevna Kozminskaya, it was mentioned that in two years after the wedding, Sofia Andreevna decided to clean out all the weeds near the house and plant the flowers there. Her favorite flower garden was on the south side of the house, where she planted the bulbous plants in autumn, such as hyacinths, daffodils, tulips, crocuses, and the countess's favorite flowers, roses and heliotropes as well as the Count's favorites, sweet peas and mignonettes. A special decoration of the family house in 1892 was an attached wooden terrace. Its peculiarity was the open-work balusters. They are made according to the sketches of Nikolai Alexievich Filosofi. He was Tolstoy's son's father-in-law. The whole family and Yasnaya Poliana's numerous guests always gathered on this terrace in summer. In a letter to his wife, dated 1897, Tolstoy wrote about the Preshpekt. The extraordinary beauty of this year's spring in the village will wake up the dead. In the morning again, the playing of light and shadows from the large, densely dressed in leaves birches. The waving of the birches of the Preshpekt is an impression Tolstoy kept for the rest of his life. Those dearest birch trees that still remembered Volkonsky. Tolstoy described the Preshpekt in more than 10 works. For example, in the novel Family Happiness and repeatedly in his epic War and Peace. Catherine II was with her audit visit in Belarus and noticed that all the entrance avenues there were ditched and lined with the trees on both sides. And when Catherine saw this in Belarus, she said, your roads are like gardens. After that, the Russian Empire also adopted a decree on that all the entrance avenues should be ditched and lined with trees. 
we have an entrance avenue for one carriage and where the royal person resided, the entrance avenue was for two carriages. In this picturesque corner of Yasnaya Poliana, a small birch tree bridge that still remembered Volkonsky. Tolstoy preserved this bridge in memory of his mother, Maria Nokolaevna. A birch tree is a symbol of Russia. Yasnaya Poliana is also one of the symbols of Russia. And for Tolstoy, it is a micro-image of Russia. It is not a coincidence that he wrote. Without my Yasnaya Poliana, I can hardly imagine Russia and my attitude towards it. And the authors of the project, obviously, reacted with great aspiration to the selection of the quotation material because I noticed that the quotes were not only from the literary text of Tolstoy, like his novels, War and Peace, and Anna Karenina, but there are also the quotes from Tolstoy's diaries, notebooks, and from his philosophical works. And now, when I hold in my hands this wonderful green mug of the Yasnaya Poliana color, which harmoniously combines with such an original, authentic color of the birch bark. The birch bark is like a message from the Middle Ages. In this project, it was just inspiring that this was Tolstoy's message from the turn of the 19th, 20th centuries to the 21st century. Count Tolstoy and his family members had a warm and tender feeling for the birches, which was also explained by the practical side of the issue. Planting of the birch trees in Yasnaya Poliana was connected with the need to gain income for their estate. In Tolstoy's lifetime, a birch tree was supplied to the Tula arms plant as a stock for guns. But still, the main task was profit. Nevertheless, everything turned out beautifully for him.